Imagine you only have one sister in this world, and this sister needs something from you, a body part, so that they can stay alive. Well, I did it without any question, but all these years later, I'm asking myself, why did I save this waste of space human? Today, I want to tell you a story. It's a story about betrayal in a way that you've never heard before. <laughs> I'll introduce myself. My name's Eli. And I would like to tell you a little about the relationship I've had with one of the most important people in my life since I was born. My sister. My sister Cindy has always been a rather peculiar person since she had a life quite apart from mine. I'm older than Cindy by three years, although for the family, those three years don't mean much. I say that because we were always treated as equals in many ways. Don't you notice that there's times when older cousins are treated slightly different than the younger ones? Whether it was in terms of conversations, gifting, whatever. Well, in our case, it's always a peer-to-peer -peer thing. At one point, I even considered that I would be left out of school for a couple years so we could study together. But in the end, nothing of that sort ended up happening. Our life turned out to be pretty ordinary, at least as far as our upbringing inside the house was concerned. Because on the outside, well, that's another story... Cindy changed a lot as a result of two factors. The first factor being, what rotted her mind, television. She was addicted to reality TV. The kind, you know, with the dysfunctional families that always end up fighting and then making up and then fighting again, toxic. And so until at least four seasons were completed. As a result, she began to behave like those people or rather believe herself to be superior. As most of these people possess various social problems, she considered herself better than others, so she started treating us as inferior. Believe me, it was much less than you can imagine. It was just that she would ask us to do her things or do her chores, and even when they were the simplest things in the world, like going to the kitchen to get a glass of water, being she was only two meters away from there, she also went through a lot of trouble with my parents because of the same attitude. To the point where they were forbid her to watch those kind of programs because they said that they were a bad influence on her and they were not wrong. Apart from that, it also affected her school performance, going to bed late and not doing her homework. I remember one time she was banned from TV for a month after she spent an entire weekend watching a marathon of one of those shows. She locked herself in her room in the middle of the worst tantrum I've ever seen in my life. And afterward, she convinced my parents to take the punishment away. Because that's, well, her superpower. Convincing people to do what she says. I know people uh, do it because she applies that same thing to the second factor that changed her a lot. When we were still very young, I think I was 14 and she was 11, she managed to convince one of our uncles to let, well, her stay at his farm for vacation. This came about after she begged to be able to do this after a sudden fondness that she got for cows and the country life. I think it's one of her TV series had something to do with it, selling her on the idea that a life in the country is the best. Well, packing up the bags and left for the farm for almost two months, I decided to stay because, well, I'm not interested in country life, and that's how I spent a whole month a little quieter. I don't know much about what happened at the farm, because my parents used to talk about Cindy and how she was doing, but I was so immersed in other things that I just did not pay attention. All I cared about was that she was okay and that she would be coming back soon, and it got to the point where you could even say I started to miss her. What things, right? The thing is that when she came back, she came back oddly changed. I mean, it was kind of weird because she now seemed to have a humbler disposition, as if she had experienced some kind of trauma. As horrible as that sounds, I have a theory that her stay was uh, so round and far from the reality she saw on the TV show that she ended up disenchanted with many things and had a change of attitude. She now seemed more anti-parabolic to what one used to say to her, but although she maintained a certain haughty attitude, the truth is that she started to be more supportive of others, including me. She said that she was beginning to treat me like a better person than others, but I always felt it was for some other reason. The truth is that there's something that slightly characterizes our relationship. People tend to make more comments to me about my physical appearance. Let's just say I'm better endowed than my sister. 
And while she wore braces, braids, and thick glasses, I wore makeup, short dresses, and, well, a hair that would not get tangled even if it was dipped in glue. I think that was also one of the triggers for this whole story. You'll see what envy can do in the lives of others and how a sister can betray her own blood just for selfish reasons, but I've given too much preamble and I'm already very sleepy. I'll tell you more tomorrow, but you can get a mental picture of what Cindy is like. Update number one. Okay, moving on. Where did I leave off? Let me see. Oh, what a pain in the butt to have uh, read it all over again, but you know what? It was late and I was tired. Anyways, Cindy changed a lot over the years, and our relationship began to put on one term, synthetic. We both talked to each other and pretended to understand one another, but deep down, there could be no coordination from both of us. With classes and so going on, we started about our lives and decided not to interfere in each other's lives. She continued on her part and continued on mine. Although, I feel that deep down, she started a kind of envy towards me. Envy for being prettier and, of course, more popular to the point of not attending parties altogether, just because I was going as well. So, she wanted to stand out with words, and I feel like she started using pity to be able to get a hold of people's opinions and emotions. On one occasion, she accused me in front of the whole family of something that happened during one of the festivities. See, she had commented that I had not bought the chicken for dinner, and I started to say that it wasn't my responsibility. But the entire family started to attack me. And at one point, I even felt like not attending the dinner. What happened in the end, you ask? The last member to arrive, who was one of her uncles living overseas, and when he showed up, he said that he was in charge of the chicken and that he was sorry for the delay. Everybody at the meeting apologized, and I swallowed deeply and told myself, it's no problem. To this day, Cindy has not apologized to me. And the main course on the table, the part I most wanted to tell you since I've wrote down with the first words of all this yesterday, is that after saving her life and risking her life, she betrays me in an almost unheard of way. First, let me tell you about the saving of her life. See, Cindy was born with a condition that makes her kidneys work to the max. Both of them because they're so small or something. The thing is that sometimes, and even though we tell her not to do it, she tends to drink at parties and social gatherings, and the next day she spends the whole time throwing up even her first porridge. I always told her that the sooner or later, that uh, was going to take a toll on it, but like someone unconscious, she never paid attention to what I said. Anyways, all said and done, she ended up having serious kidney failure that took her to the hospital urinating blood. And what was one of the darkest episodes in our family history? The doctors told us that the only way we could help her was with an emergency transplant, and there's no one available on the donor list. Well, there was one, but he was in another state, and it would have taken far too long to get there. Not to mention that it would have been incredibly expensive. Uh, that left one thing, one last option, which was the person writing about this. That's right, everyone looked at me, and you have absolutely no idea what it's like to be in that situation. I've never in my life, a uh, whole long life, been touched by a scalpel. I've never fallen, bent, hit anything, and even when I molted my baby teeth, there was no blood involved. I consider myself as healthy as possible, and the only discomfort I've ever had was diarrhea. That occurred during an intoxication after eating some cupcakes at school. Other than that, nothing. Now, you'll understand what my fear was, that they would cut me off and take away a functional, healthy part of me to give it to someone else. I know it was my sister, but I fear I've bordered on the absurd. I mean, my parents pleaded with me and asked me to reconsider because I was very evasive and tried to look for more options where there were none. If they'd seen me, they would have witnessed a pathetic person trying to save his skin, but... I felt it was what anyone would do in that situation. And to top it off, it had to be a quick decision because my sister's life depended on it. I was begging to pass out, to get through the whole thing as quick as possible, but I was lucid throughout much to my dismay. I could find no way out and I felt the weight of the world on my shoulders. If I did nothing about it, I would have been burdened with my sister's death for the rest of my life. For that very reason, I bit my tongue and sat on that stretcher. 
The operation, it was difficult. I won't lie to you. It was painful, not in the during, but the after. There were some complications with me, and what was thought to be a painless operation with quick killing took two years to end its torture. Yes, just as you've heard, two years in which I remained in bed, with a stabbing pain in one of my sides, and there was some questionable practices regarding the operation. But my grandmother, a pretty well-respected good lawyer, um, took care of it, suing the hospital for not a humble amount, well... But I tell you, at this point in my life, and even though it hurts, I can say without fear that I regret all that, having given my sister a kidney. Whether it was because of the pain or the inability I have to move freely from bed for two years, but mostly because even though I helped save her life, that little ingrate stabbed me in the back in the worst way possible. The reason I'm even writing this. Well, it was simply that she slept with my fiancé before my wedding. Yeah, you're not reading this wrong, if you will. Take your time to process this information because I'm sure as hell I'm doing it. She slept with my fiancé knowing that I loved him. Knowing that the wedding was already planned. Knowing that I sacrificed my physical integrity for her. But no, none of that was worth it for her to stick her spoon all the way in. Just because she, quote, saw the opportunity to do so. To give more context, when I was bedridden, I met a boy who used to go to the hospital because his mom was sick, and he would go and visit her constantly. A handsome, nice guy, but gross as a rock. Because now that I see everything without lovey-dovey glasses, I realize that I'm also a fool for having paid attention to someone as much as a jerk as he was. Anyways, the guy was cute, we met while I was in bed, and he always complimented me. It got to a point where every time he visited his mother, he would make a detour at the end to end up in my bed. Uh, but he was supportive and a friend when I needed him most, at a time when my family only visited as much as necessary. And when I was allowed to return home, he asked for my contact so we could continue to communicate. He came to my house trying to court me more formally. He would arrive unannounced at times with gifts for everyone, but no one paid much attention to him, only me. Obviously, he treated me like a lady, and at a time when I didn't even feel like a whole person. He was with me for the entire period of my recovery and was my biggest connection to the outside world. He also did not maintain such a close relationship with my sister. Sometimes they would greet each other and share prayers, but nothing further from that, or at least that's what I thought. I spent two years in bed with a recovery that was painful and required a lot of assistance, and asked me how much help I had from Cindy, who was able to walk after just one month and run after two. If you said nothing, you're correct. She didn't move a muscle, and I had to die of embarrassment when nurses, my parents, and even my boyfriend at the time had to help me with cleaning and my needs. It's humiliation, and I would not wish it on my worst enemy. Cindy only cared about going with her life as if nothing happened, thanking me for the sacrifice one time only, and I'm not exaggerating, it was literally once, and I counted her and everything because of, well, after that, there was nothing. My mental and physical state deteriorated quite a bit because of it, and I became thin, my hair became dark and brittle, and I was more delicate when it came to eating. After all, I didn't know what could hurt me because I don't have my two kidneys. Still... My boyfriend was with me more than any other family member, and only a year after I started walking, it was exactly on the anniversary when I could walk around without holding on to handrails or a walking stick. He got down on a knee and made the proposal. Something I could not believe. I said yes right away, a oh, poor deluded girl, if she only knew what was coming next. We arranged the wedding, and we organized it to be in November, and I think we started planning in April, though. And so began our stage. I was still enjoying some financial ease due to the demand for the hospital, and it helped us to make, if not the most outlandish wedding event of the year. At least a big one for the small number of people we wanted, mostly family to regret of some friends, but what happened was some acquaintances told me that they've seen my fiancé going out with Cindy on the outskirts of the city in quite secluded viewpoints, and precisely on a night when he told me that he was going to leave late for work. They were holding hands and were very affectionate when I knew nobody was around them. They told me that at the exact moment the events were happening, 
So I kept waiting all night for that unfaithful jerk to show up so I could throw everything at him. I spent the whole night crying, reddened with rage and prostrated, right there in bed because of a new pain that I've been given. I couldn't take so much. The person whose life I saved was now with my fiancé. Who does that? What kind of person does that to another? And being uh, your own sister? Update number two. I feel like I never finished telling this because I had to calm down on the last note because of an anxiety attack. Well, we're now in the present and I'm devastated. The worst part is that I can't find support from anyone in the family and guess why. Cindy turned everyone against me. Not only did she steal my husband, but she told him to leave me. And instead of marrying me, they should move in together. There's so many things wrong with that. I mean, first, he's five years older than me. And he's eight years older than her. Second, apparently, their relationship went way back. She confessed this to the family, and I just didn't know about it. They were making fun of me behind my back. Something I can't believe and still deny it myself when I think about it. I'm shaking with rage and feel like I could pass out at any moment. The thought that you were betrayed by everyone around you, I mean, after how wretched your life has been over the past few years, is the straw that really broke the camel's back. When I talked it over with my parents, they gave me the worst response in the world. Oh, honey, these things happen, but don't make a big deal out of it. Well, of course, since they weren't betrayed by the closest to them, they can very easily say that. I'm disgusted by everybody and everything. The only person, the only being who has taken a little pity on me is my grandmother. I think I mentioned her in one part of this text. She's a lawyer with very strong convictions, and she's one of the heads of the family, always looking out for everything. She's the only one who, when she found out about the situation, was not afraid to insult my sister to the point of saying enough. She told me that what she did was unforgivable, and that the family was taking a very comfortable position in front of everything. We're talking about calling off a wedding, and worse, a relationship that lasted so long, and According to her, quote, was formed under very nice conditions. But it's all gone to hell now. Grandma also told me that I should not pay attention to any of the people who kept me away from the real conflict. She told me that I should take revenge for what happened, for it was not every day that you had such a great display that humanity sucks. Some friends told me about taking everything to court, but I don't know if that's even possible. Although I'm not lacking in desire, I wish I could sue those two to make them give me all the years of life I lost because of them. I can't even see them in pictures or have them mentioned in other conversations because all at once my anxiety attack happens. And at any moment, they can give me considerable a physical discomfort to do to my new post-op weakness. Update number three. First of all, I want to thank you all for your comments and suggestions on the case. And you're right. Ah, those people, they don't deserve my time. I'm too young for this drama. My grandmother, however, is the best. She's simply the best. She listened to my case and agreed to help me by suing my sister and fiancé. Under the concept of psychological violence or something like that. And not only that, but guess what? We won. I was going to say she won, but she always tells me it's a joint effort and I'm brave and all that. <clears throat> Anyways, things happen like this. I told her that little option about suing them and it seemed like my grandmother was a kid being told that they were going to the amusement park. She all at once started scheming a thousands of ways in which that this could be feasible. She starts talking to me about the laws and things like that and how we could apply them to our advantage. There was one factor that gave us a big advantage, and that was that I was already married to my boyfriend. Let's see. I told them that the wedding would be this month, but it was a religious wedding. We had the civil wedding about three months ago, but it was the most boring thing in the world. I just signed a paper and that was it. We did this only as a mere formality. Anyways, having a marital union, bureaucratically speaking... That I could sue for perjury and psychological abuse, going to the point that it is with my sister. Grandma told me it would not be easy trial, but in her words, it doesn't matter, I like a challenge. That made me applaud this woman in her late 70s, and 
When we reached them both with the news, or rather, when they were being summoned to a hearing, they were very confused. And according to my parents, Cindy said that she was not going to be attending anything to do with me. It's as if she's just out of nowhere starting to generate a hatred for me. The last time I talked to the both of them was before the trial, and it was crazy. With my ex-fiancé, it was just a carnival of hate, where I was criticizing him for absolutely everything that he did. And about how everything we lived through was a lie to him, and he even went as far as to tell me how it all happened. According to him, Cindy started to be attracted to him because of the, you know, consideration he gave me. She wanted a man who was thoughtful and considerate, who would give her everything he gave me, and, well, his mistake was giving her the green light to do whatever she wanted with him. Instead, talking to her was a painful experience, as expected. As the operation I had, it was with my parents. She played the victim throughout. I would tell her that she could not be any more unhappy and unfortunate because she could not fit so much in one person. My parents kept telling me to keep my voice down, but the more they said that, the more I felt like just going up and punching her in the face. Or in the liver. <clears throat> to see if she would have liked that. I commented that all of the fish in the water, why notice mine? She didn't answer. She just said it wasn't like, quote, it should all be for me. Uh, that doesn't even make sense. I told her that I sacrificed my body for her and that she... All she did was the ultimate definition of a ducking witch. I don't usually use vulgarities, but I was reaching my limit. In subsequent meetings, she remained quiet, and so did my ex-fiancé. They did not advocate much on her behalf, because they knew that they had no way to defend themselves. In the end, it all came down to me having to be paid the equivalent compensation for the wedding and the operation, which was no small amount of money... I plan to use this to start from scratch somewhere else. I don't know, get a new job and get away from everything for a while. Right now, getting a partner is at the bottom of my priorities, and the most tragic thing about it is that I think the two of them are still together. You have to see that people, when they're bad, they're very, very bad. Well, you know what? That's up to them. They showed me that you can't trust anyone and that you should think twice before doing good. Of course, as opposed to this whole experience, my grandmother became my favorite person in the world who did not even charge me a penny to represent me, something I still can't believe. This experience has shown me the best and worst of humanity. Although it's all over now and I can be a bit more calm, I feel I need to take some time to rest as my physical condition is not the best for me to exalt myself. I think I'll join a gym next year so I can be a little calmer. Final update. Hello and Merry Christmas to you all. I hope you're very well and are having a very, very good time with your family. I'm going through the same thing, just in a slightly different way. In the end, the family let me aside, or rather, I moved away from all of them, being a bunch of hypocrites of never cared about me. Some started throwing around on social media that the family always sticks together, and they were the ones who gave me the worst of the grief. My grandmother managed to advocate for me, not only in court, but also at the family gathering before Christmas. She began to bring up the whole family as hypocrites, and once they saw that Cindy was the worst of it, they passed by me and saw that she was the bad guy in the story. Well, I got angry and played along with Grandma. Everybody felt bad, and every reason, every new excuse they gave me was quickly repelled by both me and Grandmother. We decided to leave them as we went to her house where I've now moved. And we're having a great time with some of her friends, you know. Being with older ladies is not as bad as it seems. They make the best seasonal desserts. And since they don't eat much, I have the privilege of putting on about 100 kilos with just cookies and cake. <laughs> Ask for Cindy. After she, well, and her beloved lover had to pay me what they agreed to, they stopped seeing each other. I knew they were bitter arguing with each other, the two of them. And although the cheating rat wanted to approach me again, he knew the meaning of the block option on my phone sooner rather than later. This bad experience caused a lot of stress in me, and I thought that was going to awaken old physical wounds, but it did not. Thankfully, I'm so grateful to my grandmother for standing up for me, and it's funny because I never had such a close relationship with her. I always knew that she was the coolest head in the family for many years of lawyering. 
but I never thought that she would go to the extremes of letting her entire family down in the name of justice. Well, that's what I call a hero. Still, she tells me that I should not regret saving my sister's life because it was a noble deed. That's what the world needs nowadays. Sometimes I feel that she's an even better person than me, but well, I'm glad that this whole story's over, and I'm looking forward to what the new year will bring with this new beginning. Surely, it will only be good things. Well, honestly, if it wasn't for the grandma in today's story, I don't know if it would have played out very well for OP. Well, she just learned that her fiancé was a cheater, and she finds out that her sister Cindy is still tormenting her life, but this time going so far as to cheat with her fiancé. I want to know what you guys would have done in this story. It was a wild family drama, and... Some of the parts of the story, I was just thinking to myself, are you kidding me? Luckily, we know how it ended, and OP did basically get a bit of revenge back. But I want to know what you guys thought about it, so let's talk about it down below in the comment section. My name's Mr. Redito. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's animated drama story. If you want more daily videos, go ahead, click that subscribe button. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and just remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.